All right, let's uh, get started. So, um, somebody asked me today if we can replace Trello, Slack, uh, Zoom with Nextcloud, and yeah, you can. So, um, I guess that's um, how I'll go into this conversation. You can also replace Microsoft Teams and 365 with it, or Google Workspace. But of course, why would you? So let's talk a bit about those things. Um, well, I forgot to add an about me, but hey. Um, I'm going to talk about Nextcloud, the company, a little bit, then about Nextcloud, the product, which is going to be the majority of this slide deck, actually the rest of it. Um, I might have too many slides. I think last time I counted I had 130, so let's see how far we get. Um, so if you have questions, you should just wave at me and I can address something specific or demonstrate it because I, you know, I was also asked today, do you have a desktop client for talk? And I do, I have it running here, but I don't have screenshots, I can just show it. Um, so yeah, some things uh, would be nice maybe just to show. Um, but first, why bother? So of course I can say 42, but the real reason behind Nextcloud is a little bit, yeah, I don't know if it's more complicated, it's actually also quite simple. Um, I gave a talk earlier today where I basically said, look, we don't want to live in a world where five big tech companies control all our data, and yeah, that's why we started Nextcloud. Um, we want to have an ethically responsible platform that people can use to collaborate and work together. Now, this time I actually did have a video. If I just plug it in, will this work, Mr. Tech Guy? Sorry, I only now realized that I do have something that has sound. I don't know how well it will work, but um, this will probably work. All right. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right and everybody should have access to secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. All right, so I think that's kind of cool to have our team members, you know, express the values we have as a company. I wasn't sure the video would work, so I also put it in text. Um, but yeah, it boils down to working in an open, transparent way, which is why we think open source is important, um, and why we think diversity and, and giving everybody a chance is important, uh, to build a solution that is better for everyone. Yeah? So that's us as a company, and so, well, our mission is to enable companies, organizations, but of course also individuals, to run their own content collaboration platform. Now, as people, we started the company because we care about privacy, and of course privacy is something a human has. A company might want to control the data too, but I don't think they have a moral right to do so. I think companies should be transparent, certainly to government uh, and to society in large. But of course, it is our business model. Um, you know, you gotta have something to pay the salaries. So yeah, our business model is basically offering an enterprise build of our product, similar to Red Hat and SUSE, uh, to businesses together with services, certification, etc., to make it uh, well, to ensure their success, so we get paid and can improve the product further. Now, this is working fairly well for us as a business. Um, I think I mentioned also in my early presentation, we grew about 80% last year. 
uh, we're aiming for the similar percentage this year. And this is completely done self-funded. Uh, so no venture capital, um, no external dependencies, uh, employee-owned, basically. Um, yeah, we're a very international company as well, uh, distributed all over the place. So, when, and we build open source software, Nextcloud Hub, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, On-prem, we don't host. There's no SaaS uh, offering from Nextcloud. We host a couple of pieces of infrastructure, like our App Store, our update server, things like that. Um, but if you're a customer uh, or a home user, there's no contract to sign with us about access to data because we don't get access to your data. And we're not a data processor if you're a GDPR nerd. Um, so, yeah, there's a ton of security capabilities that we, of course, have and need because privacy doesn't work without security. Um, but as a business, um, we mostly aim for bigger customers. So Nexo doesn't sell anything under 100 users, but our salespeople don't really get out of bed under 500 users, usually. So our 12 to 1,500 customers are 1,000 users plus mostly. Some of them have millions of users, even tens of millions. Um, and Nexot scales really well. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of people running it on Raspberry Pi or a simple VPS. Um, but yeah, as I said, there are also millions of users on single instances. Uh, the largest single instance, as in an individual server, is here in Germany. Uh, that's about three and a half, four million. Um, the largest single installation, because Nexot allows you to cluster clusters, basically, which act as a single instance for an end user. You know, you log in in one place, you share simply to another person, doesn't matter where they are. Uh, the largest installation that uses this global scale architecture has yeah, over 20 million users. So again, scalability is, well, a solved problem for Nextcloud already for many years. Uh, this large installation of 20 million users went live in 2017. So when I say it's a solved problem, I mean literally a long time ago. This is really... Yeah, Nexus scales really well, really easily. But Nexus is also an application platform. So there are tons of applications that either add functionality, integrate with third-party platforms, um, or yeah, offer completely new features, you know, like music players, uh, bookmark uh, manager, um, you know, etc. So complete applications. So that's kind of a Big picture of Nextcloud, the company and the product. So let's talk about what we have built, this Nextcloud thing itself. Now, Nextcloud started with a file server. Uh, well, hmm. we started with a file sync and share. But, mm, well, I see some gray hairs here. So a lot of you are probably familiar with the history of sharing documents. It used to be you had a file, ser file server, um, novel, perhaps. Um, that you were using to share files, right? Everybody had their user directory, and then you could give people access to this with ACLs and all this stuff. Um, later, Dropbox and other services started to make sharing easier. Instead of having to ask a sysadmin and having a home directory, you could, as a user, manage the sharing yourself. So we cut out the sysadmin to some degree. Um, and this became Enterprise File Sync and Share, where the sysadmin regained a bit of control over this data sharing, being able to create certain policies, like, hey, files um, created by the HR department should not be shared outside of the company, things like that. Um, and so Nextlab did that in you know, its earlier history. Um, but today, in the time of Google Workspace and, and Slack and Teams, you need a complete collaboration platform to be productive, right? And so this is Nexot Hub, which brings multiple products together. Uh, four at the moment, there will be a fifth. Our AI uh, features will constitute a fifth product soon. But it's basically file management, um, yeah, chat, video calls, so basically Slack and Zoom. Um, can use it for webinars, for events, etc. as well. Uh, groupware, so mail, calendar, contact, task management, the Kanban project management app, as well as a knowledge base, collectives, so think Confluence kind of stuff, um, and Office, uh, which is built on Collabora Online, but also has a bunch of other components like um, a survey tool uh, that is a little bit similar to Google Forms, for example, um, yeah, and the knowledge base, etc. So. 
you can use each of these parts independently. We have customers who just have Nextcloud Talk and use it as a Slack replacement or a Zoom replacement. Um, but if you use them together, you get certain benefits, of course, because building an integrated suite of applications rather than cobbling together a bunch of random things and you know, saying like, hey, you can log in in one way and now it's one product, it gives a very different experience to an end user. Huh? And open source world, there's a bunch of you know, open source software by nerds for nerds, I would say, that works a bit that way and just hooks things together a little bit. Um, but, well, I would argue that having a single integrated product rather than a mishmash of pieces um, gives a better user experience. And certainly for non-technical people, a uh, better user experience just means better productivity. So just to give a couple of examples, um, having an integrated product means you can have more of an overview. Yeah, in the contacts app, you can create teams, and then you can see the resources that these teams have, you know, chat rooms, storage spaces, documentation, calendars, project boards, etc. So it gives you an overview of, hey, what is this team doing and what do they have access to? Yeah. Um, you can then see this and immediately, you know, share resources with a team. And people can then add other people to a team. These teams are user managed. They're not groups, as in the sysadmin defines them, but they are teams where a manager, for example, can add people to their team. You can create an ad hoc team. You can have a team that is open for the organization. People can just look and join from the list of teams and leave it again. Or you can have teams where you have to request access before you can get in and somebody has to moderate it. Like all these semantics are available for collaboration and this then works across the entire suite of software. So you can assign a task to a team, you can you know, open a chat room for a team, you can create a documentation uh, collection for a team, etc. So these concepts are all connected, which gives of course a much better experience. Another example is that uh, we have an office hours um, yeah, system. Basically, you define your office hours, and when you're outside of your office hours, well, you can turn on Do Not Disturb, and you won't get notifications from your chat app. Uh, in your calendar, it'll show you as out of office. Um, in the chat app, people can see that you're not available because you're out of office, etc. And the same with the out of office itself, where you know, if you configure it here, then you see it in the chat app, for example, here on the bottom. But you will also, of course, get an out of office uh, reply from the email client. You can see it in the calendar, etc. Because it's one system, it all acts as one system, which, well, makes it easier for people, I think, to work with it. Last but not least, um, uh, so we have Nexo Deck, which is kind of a Kanban style you know, project management app, and I want to show you something in there which is really cool. So, is it playing? No. So we have a tool called the Smart Picker. You type a slash, and you can add content. So there can be files. Um, can also be a link to a document, and if you want, you can just see the bloody document. You can scroll through the document, and you can click on Edit, and just edit the document right there, embed it. And this is, of course, a file on Nextcloud Files, using Nextcloud Office in Nextcloud Deck to view you, show you the document. You think, okay, that's really cool. Um, but of course, this also works in our chat system, where you can just go and, without having to open this document, load somewhere else, edit a spreadsheet just right there in line, um, working with other people. This can be during a call, uh, then the chat is on the sidebar. Uh, you can keep your notes there. You don't need to open a new tab or open a document. You just share a link to a document. Um, and you can just use the um, attachment icon there on the bottom to say create new document. And you just say create a Word document. And then the document is created, shared into the room, and everybody can edit it right away, even if they don't have an account. So this works also for people who don't have an account. If you made a public link to this chat room, then they can also download, view, and edit the document because, I mean, you want people to be able to work together. You gave Max to the room, so they should have access to the document as well. So it's an integrated whole where all the pieces, well, fit together nicely. Um, and this also works in the calendar. Um, you know, you can share a link to a public calendar, for example. You can then go to talk, um, paste it in the chat room, um, and there you can then, um, yeah, you get a 
movable interactive calendar widget, you know, um, where you can see the items from the public calendar link that you just shared. So, yeah. I mean, you have a mail. Uh, many apps have, of course, integration between calendar and mail, and we do that too. Uh, we throw a little bit of AI in the mix. There are some recommended replies, and when you create a calendar item out of an email, it will automatically generate a description and a um, title using you know, a large language model to check. Of course, it runs on premise, at least if you want it that way. So all these pieces together make the difference, I think, between you know, running, I don't know, Zoom and Trello and, and you know, five other platforms like Confluence, et cetera, that all don't, don't, don't interoperate that well, or taking a bunch of open source products that don't in, interoperate that well, versus a combined single platform that does it. So, that's Exit Hub. I'm going to go now over the different pieces. Um, sometimes talk a bit more about integration. If I go too fast, wave at me. If you have questions, you know, let me know. I'm happy to elaborate on some of the things, because there's a ton Nexo does, and I think there are very few people who know all the things it does. It's not really reasonable to do that. It's such a big thing. Um, yeah, so Nexo files. Um, as some of you might know, on the back end, you can connect like a Samba or an NFS or an FTP, hook it into Nextcloud make it just show up as a folder, decide who gets access to it. We have access control lists as well. Um, and this way you can make the information in your organization, wherever it is, accessible in a single place. That's a very useful feature, I think, for a lot of users. We have guest accounts, you know, watermarking, um, automated workflow management tools, tons of stuff. But usually your day would start on the dashboard. That's, of course, another app, so it's optional, like all apps can be disabled. Uh, I personally don't use it. I know a ton of colleagues do use it, to each their own. Um, now, let's start a bit with files. So, you probably get a lot of files that you deal with day to day, I mean, some more than others. Uh, if you're a developer, you use GitHub to keep, or Git, to keep it all a little organized. Um, if you're more of an administrative person, you're probably flooded with all kinds of documents you're working on. So Nextcloud Files helps you in a few ways to try and keep it all organized. So for example, it will recommend some files there on top, uh, files that have been recently shared with you, recently edited, etc. So there's a good chance that actually the file you're looking for is right there already. Um, on the side, you can see all the sharing options. Um, you know, you can share with an individual or with a team. Um, then you have below there related resources. So these are documents, but also calendar items or chat rooms that are shared with the same people. So if I have a file, I share it with someone. I also have a chat room shared with them. I also maybe have a calendar item shared with them. We're probably working together on the project. Then when you go to the file, or you go in the calendar, or you go to the task, or the chat room, you can see all the other resources. Nexo does this automatically, just connecting these things. Yeah? This also works, of course, for teams. So you can have a team that is working on something, and then all the resources shared with the team will be visible you know, from the deck board, or from the chat, or from the file. So you can click right through them um, in a very easy way. Now, on top of a folder, you can put folder information, you can put notes there, you can put tables there, you can put images there, uh, checklists, etc. Uh, we internally use this a lot just to, well, if you're working with 20 people in a certain folder structure, there are probably about 20 different ideas of what that folder structure should look like. And to keep it all kind of organized, we put in the folder information, like, hey, this folder is for this, don't do that, don't put that there, etc. Try to keep it all a little bit um, managed that way. And then totally on the left, you have then quick ways to find your files, to find your um, yeah, shared files or recently edited files, etc. Uh, or your project folders, right? The group folders there, those are the different projects that have been assigned to you, uh, folders that are shared with other people. Now, you have different ways to view all this. You can, of course, well, go on your mobile phone. Nextcloud Files has a mobile app. 
Uh, the folder info is visible there as well. The related files are visible there as well, all the share information. So we try and make sure that all the information you have in the web UI is also available on the phone, can be edited on the phone as well. Uh, and you have different views. You can have a grid view if that's what you prefer. Um, there's a ton of sharing capabilities in Nextcloud. We recently added um, a feature to add um, a limited number of downloads. But the basics, like expiration date, password, all these things are there. Uh, you can watermark things. We have a real cool token of integration. We have a feature called video verification. So when you share a link to a file, you can put a password on it, and then you need to get the password to the recipient. But if you want to make sure that the recipient really is who they should be, and not, for example, their spouse or a kid who got their phone, you can enable video verification. And then the only way to get access to the file is they click on the link, they see a button that says call, and then you will get a call on your phone, and you can have a video call and just check with them if they say they are who they are, and then you give access to the file or folder. So it's a yeah, pretty nice feature, bringing talk and files together in a single product. Um, we have a very nice versioning system where you keep all the versions of files. Um, it progressively keeps less files, so like you go one file per minute, per hour, per day, per week, etc. We can name a file to make sure that you know the first draft stays available forever. You can also compare them side by side, as you can see, or just click through them. Um, oh, there was a zoom as well. How nice! So. Uh, we have document templates, uh, so you can manage either as an admin, you can create templates for your organization, or you can manage them per user for yourself. Uh, we have a unified search, so it's a search that lets you search in deck cards, in emails, in calendar items, uh, chat messages, etc., all in one interface. Um, yeah, devices, I already mentioned mobile phones, so for the uh, for files, there's a mobile phone app. Um, you'll get notifications, real-time notifications on your phone. If somebody shared a file with you, if you want, this is of course configurable. Uh, or if you get an incoming phone call, then uh, you can pick up. Um, we even have nice widgets uh, on Mac OS, on iPads. You have these nice uh, widgets, um, which we support as well. So you can have a chat widget and you know recent activity and such. Um, that's really cool. Of course, desktop clients, uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, as well as Outlook integration. I'll skip all the security stuff. Most of you, well, it's secure, trust me, bro style, um, but you can also look it up online. A cool feature, I think, is remote wipe. Um, yeah, we integrated this because not everybody is, of course, using some kind of device management software. Uh, so we built into Nextcloud itself, so it will, it will wipe your phone or your desktop client. Um, we use machine learning, actually, to detect suspicious logins. That's a cool feature. We have end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, so that is client-side, uh, so you cannot access it in the browser. Otherwise, well, a compromised server still wouldn't protect you. Um, this works on the folder base, so you can pick a folder on your desktop client. Uh, it'll encrypt all the contents and only send encrypted files to the server. You don't have to use a passphrase to get access to that same folder on your phone. And you can share this folder with other people, uh, as long as they have also already set up end-to-end -end encryption. They will be able to read the contents of that folder. So it's, um, yeah. It's a nice system, so it protects from a compromised server, basically. That's the, the use case for it. I already talked a little bit that you can hook other storage systems into Nextcloud files. We work a lot on accessibility. And there is a federation capability in Nextcloud files. So if you have multiple people who have a Nextcloud files running, a Nextcloud server, you can connect these servers. They can exchange address books. And then users on one server can share files to users on the other server, and they will just get synced by the desktop clients. They can just edit them locally, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter where the files are anymore. So the usernames are autocomplete. It feels like suddenly you've connected two systems into one. It's, um, yeah, it's quite a powerful feature. So there's Nextcloud files. 
I went really fast over a ton of things. I hope it wasn't too fast. Um, next will be next I'll talk, but if you have questions, please just ask. There's a lot more there. Um, Time-wise, I think I am at the end of my time, though. But the next speaker said that he didn't have enough content for the whole talk, so I'm going to steal a bit of time from him. I hope that's OK. Still there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so next I'll talk. It's basically Slack and Zoom in one, I suppose. So it's a team collaboration chat tool, as well as for video calls, even video conferencing. Um, I can't read that. Five minutes? OK, I could read that then. Um, yeah, so basically replacing Slack and Zoom, I suppose. We use it internally for webinars as well. We have customers using it for big calls of a lot of people. Uh, it has a ton of advanced capabilities. You have some automation things, so you can have commands, like in Slack, for example. Um, group calls, public, internal, etc. Basically, it has all the features you expect, you know, liking comments and mobile apps, of course. You can have your calls on your phone, screen sharing. Um, as I said earlier, you can create documents from a template directly into a chat room. You can have calls with a ton of people. Um, yeah, we have background blur. Uh, we have some um, kind of mental health features. For example, if you're in a call, after one hour, you'll get notified that it's already been an hour. Maybe it's time to wrap it up. Uh, we show how long people are talking. That means people like me feel at least a little bit of shame for being so noisy all the time. Um, and also the ability to send chat messages or start a call without notifying everybody in the room. So if you have a big chat room with, I don't know, 50 people in it, and you want to have a call with five people, you can just start a silent call. The five people join, and the other 45 don't immediately get notified and have their phone ring. Um, so just keeping it from getting so disruptive for everybody. Of course, you can configure if you want notifications from a specific chat room. Yeah, I don't want call notifications from every room that my company has, because you know, some of these are for teams that have weekly calls that I'm not in. Um, but yeah, in some rooms, I do have the notifications on, and I don't want every call there to be shared. So we have a desktop app. Um, first of all, if you have the files client, you get notifications on your desktop. You can just click Join Call, and then it opens. Um, but we also have a desktop client for talk. One minute? Damn, I'm not going to get the group here. Um, yeah, so as I said, all the features are available on the phone as well. Um, we have federation as well. So not just for files, we also have it for chat. So if you have two Nexus servers, uh, you can connect them, and then people from one server can invite people from the other server, and they can chat with each other in the same chat room. You get notifications on your own phone from the other server, etc. cetera. Uh, groupware, calendar, contacts, mail. We have kind of a Calendly feature built in as well, so other people can book meetings with you. We have a nice address book that creates an automatic organization chart. Um, we have Nexod Office, which has a built-in markdown text editor that you already saw earlier uh, with the versioning, for example. Um, but we also have Collabora Online built in called Nexout Office. We have a team of five people just working on integrating Collabora Online in Nextcloud. So it's not just iframing Collabora, but it fits with the theme, as you can see. Uh, the font management is done by Nextcloud. Uh, you can add mention people, for example. The link picker that I showed earlier, you know, slash and then type a link, works in Collabora Online as well. So we really integrated it into Nextcloud as a part of it. Um, I don't know why this is here. Uh, video calls while you're editing documents, of course. Watermarks. A really nice feature, if you have the desktop client running, you can, in the desktop, right-click a file and say, Edit in Nextcloud, and then it opens up in the browser. Vice versa, if you're in the browser, you can use a three-dot menu on a file. Maybe it's a Photoshop file, which you can't edit in the browser. But you also don't want to download the file, edit it, upload it again. So you use a three-dot menu, you say, edit locally. It'll open up a Photoshop on your server, on your desktop. First, it locks the file. Then make sure you have the latest version already downloaded with the client. It lets you edit. And when you're done editing, it unlocks the file. 
and of course uploads the changes. So this way you can work with multiple people on one Photoshop file without getting conflicts from editing, because the automatic locking makes sure that you don't get conflicts. It's a quite nice feature. AI, see my previous presentation. Um, I already talked about most of these things, so I'm going to skip that. Are there any questions? Because we're kind of at the end of it, and I was speed running it. No questions. I bet I just went too quick. Oh, yeah, you, sir. Um, I don't know. Yell at me. I'll uh, repeat it. So we have, uh, the question is about end-to-end -end encryption in Talk, but actually Talk uh, doesn't have end-to-end -end encryption, only files does. Um, the exact algorithms, gosh, that's terribly detailed, but we have a whole white paper on it you could download, because um, I don't know the exact algorithms, but then if you throw enough bits at it, I guess it's fairly safe. Um, but yeah, you'd have to download uh, the white paper. Um, I already showed interactive widgets, federated chat. These are a couple of new things from the last release. Um, any more questions? Shlush, we quit. It's your turn. Thank you all.